My name is Hanan Lakoud. I'm a civil engineer, graduated in Syria, and I worked as a civil engineer in Syria. I returned to university and studied modern education. I have five children. I moved to Germany after the forced displacement from Daraya. I currently work in an engineering office in Germany. I am the head of the executive committee in an organization working in the protection of children. I know Nabil since he was five years old. Uh, his grandma, uh, mother and my grandmother were friends, so uh, we used to meet through them. When we grew up, I met Nabil in the uh, in uh, Mr. Abdul Rahman Sakka's uh, office, and it's a youth group from Daraya. Nabil was 16 years old, and I met him in uh, that office, and he came and introduced himself, and he said that I'm Nabil, and we were young, and we met through our grandmothers, and we used to exchange letters through our grandmothers. So this was a very nice initiative from him, and that was in 2003 when we, were, uh, we had to leave uh, forcefully. 2003. In two I met Nabil in 2003 uh, after we left uh, the uh, mosque and uh, we were 16 to 17 years old and we left in 2012. When did you, to your recollection, before we, we asked um, your husband, when he began expressing desires or writing beyond those letters, a uh, uh, desire of becoming a journalist or, or something of his interpretation of journalist at the time? Uh, Nabil. Nabil was gifted, and he was gifted, and he could see problems and uh, analyze them and express them very well. So this was his gift. Even when I used to have dialogues or uh, conversations with him, he was able to explain that there was a problem here, and he was able to explain it in a very uh, fluent and eloquent way, and he, it, he would reach hearts before reaching brains. So that was when he was 16 years old, after we grew up. In 2003, when the guys were uh, detained, I would like to um, clarify something. Nabil is a in a younger group from, in a younger group compared to another group that was older. He was born in this. Uh, he was born in the 80s, and there was a group of people born in the 70s. Uh, so the people who were born in the 80s uh, were students in uh, the uh, mosque where we used to go. N Nabil was a student with Haytham Al Hamwi, and he was detained with the rest of the guys in 2003, and then he was released in 2005. So, since his childhood, Nabil grew up with this group. When Haytham was detained, uh, Nabil was in the baccalaureate, and then he went uh, to the agricultural institute because his father had a garden, and he was helping him. So. And then when the others were released from uh, the detention and they continued their activities together and Nabil uh, kept meeting with Haytham, Haytham then encouraged him to become a professional journalist because he had this gift. He was able to see what's wrong and analyze it and express it. How did you know Nabil and when? Yes, uh, good morning and thank you for this invitation. Uh, my name is Osama Shurbaji. Um, uh, I'm from Daraya. I graduated from pharmacy and I did my PhD uh, in Paris 7 uh, in Paris uh, in, on molecular biology. Uh, the first time I met Nabil, it was in 2003. We, we, we are from the same family, but I didn't know him before that. Uh, after my release, because I was detained by the Assad regime uh, for three months with the youth of Daraya, uh, he came to me uh, after my release to my home, and he introduced his uh, himself, saying, oh, I am Nabil Shurbaji, I am your, one of your cousins, and I know about you and why you, are, you were detained, and I am one of the students of Haysam al Hamwi." So uh, at the beginning, I was a little bit, uh, I, I had so, some doubt because I, I, I didn't saw him before. 
but when we when we when I invited him to my home and uh, we discussed and we quickly became friend and and friends in our, our relationship um nabil i think he 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 was very clear that he wanted to be a professional journalist because he used to come uh, to to my home to my house every day at the morning at five o'clock morning after the prayer of the the morning because the, the mosque was near my, my my home and we used to talk in a standard arabic a classical arabic because he wanted to try to train himself to be a professional journalist and don't to speak in the syrian dialect because it's something different if you want to be a journalist you should be very fluent in this kind of, of language arabic and so we we uh, we trained ourselves so I, I i helped him and because he was committed to to to, to these uh, issues so we discussed a lot of topics political change so, social change we we studied together some some um, uh, books of Gandhi of nonviolent struggle and this was how I, I met Nabil this uh, daily meetings was between 2003 and 2005 because after that I, I went to France to continue my my study We've heard in the, in the last day, uh, and I think we all know how relevant Daraya was for the beginning of the uprising in 2011 and, and beyond everything that they, we've seen. Could you just explain us, both of you, it's a question for both of you, is how that came about. It is a neighborhood, but how that came about and what the depth and the, and the scope, perhaps, of this movement as, as things were, were uh, changing in 2011. I would like to go back to 2003, because in 2003, so from 1989 until 2000, we were in the uh, mosque of uh, Bin Malik. It was a social and religious movement where a youth group of men and women in a safe environment, so they were expressing their opinions and discussing things freely. This group was characterized that each person was able to grow naturally without any pressures, without any social pressures. So this group developed and grew. And Osama, for example, had a group of students working, who he was working with them, and he was conveying the same message to them. So Nabil grew up in this group. So I would like to go. Uh, to 2000, when we were uh, ousted from the mosque uh, forcefully. And then we started meeting in the library of uh, Mr. Sakka, who established the place and who sponsored this group uh, uh, until it reached this level of awareness and uh, this level of responsibility. And we became uh, aware of all the faults that are around us in our society. So. 25 of the guys uh, were uh, detained and 11 girls were invited to the security offices. So the guys between 2003 and 2005 were released in um, program uh, like one after the other. Nabil witnessed all these phases with us. The first one was in the uh, intellectual development that we had and the cultural development that we have uh, built together in the safe group. And then he saw that this led to a direct confrontation with the Syrian regime. Uh, this led also to the, the detention of the guys and also the girls. The development of Nabil during this phase made him mature a bit early, and he decided that he has to do something. So he had to do something, and he had to keep resisting any violence directed towards the people because of their opinions. Uh, could you please also repeat the question? Answering, I just wanted to understand uh, better how this group in Daraya came about. Our understanding is that Daraya is a neighborhood, and there has been particularly uh, targeted 
uh, prior even to 2011 by the regime. So we wanted to understand the movements and what was the, the sentiment around the people that I and how these groups the later became so crucial in the 2011 uh, demonstrations came about. I would like to remind you of the works that the group did in its uh, environment in uh, Agdareya between 2000 and 2003. So there were four uh, social activities, uh, which was stopping bribes, for example, uh, objecting to the uh, American assault or attack on Baghdad. Uh, we were also doing some cleaning activities in our uh, city. So we were responsible for our uh, society. There was also a library, so we collected books and we put them all together. Uh, and we uh, also brought two computers uh, connected to the internet. So if anyone needs to make a research, they can do this. So there was always someone present in this library to help people do any uh, research or build their uh, knowledge. So it was like a scientific center. So we were multidisciplinary. And you heard that like Osama had a, a specialization. I'm an engineer. We had also uh, specialists in uh, uh, literature. We had doctors. So we had all the specialization that could help any young person in their research. So this work was closed. We only worked for one month. And then the security agency came uh, via the uh, municipality and closed our center. And they uh, called the guys to the uh, and detained them for a long time. So this movement uh, between 2003 and 2000 and 2003 led to the detention of the guys between 2003 and 2005. And us, as women, we were uh, visiting the parents of these detainees. I used to go and uh, visit Nabil's parents or Ahmed's uh, parents. So I was trying to to provide them some uh, social or psychological support. And when the guys were released in 2005, we met again. 2011 was like a dream moment. We used to dream to make any change. So we were following the news about Tunisia when, they hap when, it ha when things started to happen in 2010. And then the, the events in uh, Egypt followed. And then we were wondering if we can do something or not. We were always communicating about this. And Nabil was a part of the group. There was no mentor and, uh, and student. We were all equals at that point. I want to add some, some points about, about Nabil and, and the groups, what, what is what's special in that group in this area and this environment. Uh, to be honest, Daraya is one of the, uh, how I can say, it's a community very conservative and with a big respect of their religion. And what is special is about this group, it is to have, we can criticize everything. We can we can think about everything. There is no taboo in in our groups. So one of the most important subjects and uh, we, we, which we, we we used to discuss it was about the violence and how we can express our demands without using the violence, the the non-violent struggle. And Nabil was very very close to to, to these discussions. And I, I when I went to France in two thousand five. I still, I remain have some connection with Nabil, but I met him again in 2009 in a training, a long training uh, about the nonviolent struggle. Uh, this uh, training was conducted by trainees from, from Serbia, uh, outdoor uh, movement, uh, and uh, Nabil all this time was thinking about how he can practice what he learned in Syria, this was b before 2011. So when the Arab Spring began in, in, in Syria, it was this opportunity. And Nabil was very uh, motivated, excited to, oh, OK, we can do uh, the, the same scenario, and we can, we can win, and we can change the dictatorship. Um, so all this discussion be before, I think, gave us some advantage when the uh, Syrian uh, revolution began, because we were aware about the then how many dangerous is the, the, the violence, and if we use if people use weapon and arms to defend themselves or to attack some 
police center or something like that, we, how dramatic will it, will it will be? The the and we we see now uh, the, the the results. So th this well, this is the, the history of of this group. During Maybe perhaps within that actually context and to, you know, better about Nabil and, the, and all of you and the engagement of the work, we also learned in the last 24 hours when how crucial it was to get internet when the satellites and access to internet in the 2000s, as it was for all of us, but it was real in Syria. So in that moment, how if you guys can... can um, maybe narrate how he came about to become a journalist and how those demonstrations, because what we what we know is that there are, that Aya had also these massive demonstrations that were filmed and that they went then reproduced in social media and all of that forged a little bit the type of journalism that he became known for. Perhaps just walking us through through that so the, those um, months in two thousand eleven. Mm. Uh, when, when I remember Nabil, when when his 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 name came to my mind, I always remember uh, Nabil with his camera in 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 uh, attached to him. So before before the the 2011. So I think he he was very related to to his camera and to want to show people how how we what. what uh, how, uh, like Hanan said, he was very smart to see the problem and uh, in the society and how to 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 make some light in in different component of the society. And uh, when uh, after 2011, Nabil was in charge to film the demonstration, the pacific demonstration in the um, uh, uh, in in, in Daria. And as this job is very dangerous because the Assad regime targeted journalists and wanted to hidden what what uh, what happened, what was happening in Syria. So Nabil was uh, hidden and in, in and and was t trying to work with uh, another name, a fake name, to and to uh, go to to, to upload uh, the, the his videos with another name because uh, this. This work was very dangerous, and uh, um, especially in, in in the first years of of uh, the revolution. Um, I don't know if. I want to remind you that Nabil studied uh, journalism for four years uh, in Syria, and uh, in Syria. Uh, he was able to study and work at the same time. In 2011, I want to add something. Uh, so uh, women's, uh, the women's peaceful movement in Daraya in 2011 started with the youth groups movement. I was the coordinator between the women's group and the men's group. Uh, Daraya is a very conservative uh, town, so uh, women and men w w wouldn't communicate uh, very easily. So I would meet with the uh, men's group. Uh, and then I would uh, convey the ideas, uh, the strategy, and everything to the women's uh, group. So this was a kind of an, an organized revolution. It started in Daraya very early in 2011 uh, due to the efforts of the youth. Uh, we decided that everyone would stick to their spe uh, specialization. Uh, Nabil was an expert in uh, media-related affairs, so he was in charge of everything related to news report, uh, uh, media, uh, photography or coordinating uh, with any international media outlets. When I was working uh, with the women's uh, group in Daraya, I would communicate uh, with Nabil before issuing any report. Uh, Nabil would object to uh, some uh, photographs, for example, and would teach us how to take uh, photos. Then, after a while, uh, there was a, a media the women's group uh, started uh, 
uh, being in charge, Nabil was training these women uh, on how to uh, photograph, uh, how to uh, draft uh, news reports, and how to be even more professional. So. This is what Nabil did to us when it comes to uh, training. Uh, he would tell us, for example, the, uh, this video doesn't have high definition. It should uh, be better. And he would provide the women with uh, all the equipment necessary. I'm sorry, I'm speaking a bit fast. Was that it? I'm sorry. No, no worries. I think uh, they haven't complained yet to me. They, uh, is the, it was, was Nabil the only a young person at the time, I mean, recently graduated, doing this. I mean, it was something that was spreading around the country of that I was really the epicenter of these uploading videos and, and the risk, obviously, taken by all the Nabil and others in the filming. Was that, uh, just can you tell us a little bit of if it's the only one? Nabil can el mushrif. Nabil was the supervisor of the youth group, so because he was the specialized one, he would carry out the professional work. As Khulud said yesterday, Nabil was educated and he was a professional uh, journalist. Therefore, he was in charge of the uh, media committee. When they detained him, they knew that Nabil was the coordinator of everything. The security officer, when he detained him, he said, OK, now we got this, the whole group by detaining you. What, so he was arrested the first time in 2011, is that right? Um, I, I think this part, uh, because I, I was outside Syria, but yes, uh, Nabil was arrested twice. The first time, I think. The first time was on 16th of March 2011. We had a sit-in uh, in front of the uh, Ministry of Interior. I was with uh, Nabil and Osama and uh, another uh, group. When we got there, we were five minutes late because uh, Nabil was fixing uh, his camera. He was adjusting the settings. When we got there, uh, there were a lot of security officers. Uh, the security forces were spread uh, in the square. Uh, therefore, I understood everything. When they came to arrest uh, a woman, uh, a woman, uh, Nabil and Osama were trying to uh, to hold her uh, in order for them not to detain her. Uh, so. Nabil was trying to protect some of the people, but then they arrested all of them. This happened in 16th of March 2011. They stayed there and they were on a hunger strike in order uh, to, uh, to protest the situation. 20 days later, uh, they were released, and this was the first arrest of Nabil. The second time happened in February 2012. The then the security officer told him, now we got you, so we got uh, uh, the whole media coordination team. This happened in Dareyo. The detention of perhaps both, but um, with a focus on the second one in 2012, did you as a group um, do anything in uh, to publicize, to alarm others? Clearly, Nabil was a person known within the Daraya movement to knock at the doors of authorities. What was the impact and also the reaction uh, to his arrest? Um, <clears throat> when he was arrested, I was talking to him in the same time. And I was very afraid about his arrest because I, I talked to him, are you sure you are safe if you want to move from, because he was uh, tried to uh, hide in, in, in several homes in, in Daria. And he said, no, no, OK, it's very, everything is OK, and there is no checkpoint at this time. And he wanted to see he, his fiancée. But unfortunately, in the same days, I, we, 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 we lost the connection. And after that, after few hours we, we, we realized that uh, Nabil was arrested. I think uh, his arrestation was a big, uh, 
how we can say, had a big impact on on the city because Nabil was one, or I can say the most one who who um, prevent uh, youth from uh, using violence in in in, in the uh, demonstration. Uh, he several time was uh, uh, how I can say uh, <coughs> discussed with youth about the. Uh, impact of the violence. He he was offered some uh, 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 support from some people from Arabia Saudi if he want money, if he want some materials uh, uh, support, uh, if he allow uh, some use to use a weapon or to use some Sunni. Uh, symbolic names to 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 rise this uh, ideology in the area so he was he 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 blocked all these um, uh, ways and he wanted to to be very clear that we don't want to use uh, violence his arrestation i i think was a, a dramatic because one of the most important people who who was uh, Trying to block using the violence in, in the in the area was now absent. Uh, of course, there is another uh, causes to use violence, not not only 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 that, but um, for in my opinion, Nabil was was one of the most important people in the area to prevent violence in 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 the area. Uh, I want to explain something. Uh, the person who uh, arrested Nabil uh, is one of the people who entered suddenly to Daraya, and then they arrested him at uh, a very important um, at a very important intersection. So there, they would search all the cars. They would ask people for their IDs. They had a list of people they wanted to arrest. Uh, Nabil was unlucky because uh, uh, his car, uh, we had, he had to go uh, with his car uh, to this intersection that had a checkpoint. He had a laptop, and then when he, they saw him and saw his ID, they, uh, they recognized him. And then when they arrested him, they thought that uh, they won because uh, they thought that they uh, arrested the person in charge of this whole uh, Syrian revolution in Daraya. I assume you know this through witnesses that were with him when he was arrested. Uh, we were always in contact uh, through a Facebook group that was closed uh, uh, only for us. Uh, so. In the Facebook group, uh, people would write, uh, for example, Nabil was arrested, uh, be careful. So if uh, Nabil didn't have his uh, mobile phone, uh, all these people should uh, hide and be cautious. So when I was using a nickname, uh, and when someone would be arrested, uh, my nickname would be exposed, so I had to change it. So when someone is arrested, this, is a, this used to be a priority for us. Uh, we would tell uh, the people in this group, uh, for example, this person was arrested, he had this, this and that, uh, they took his laptop, etc. So what are the inf pieces of information that the security guards got when they arrested him? And I think they officially, um, they said they, all of you and their relatives knew about his death in 2018, if I'm not, or 19, 15, sorry. But during that time, were you guys in communication with them? It was the ability or the possibility of communicate, or he was engaged still in, but in the teachings and in the, in the teachings and on the efforts that you were trying to achieve as a, as a youth group and beyond. Um, yes, uh, uh, we we had a chance to communicate with Nabil, and this is very very rare in, and, and and strange in in Syria. But through one member of his family, who was visiting him in in Dar, um, um, Adra, Adra prison, 
and uh, we communicate with him so he always send us about his news how he's going and he wanted to us to, to to write him some letters so we have this communication and i i received uh, letters from him uh, in a, in a hidden way and but and and he was very afraid to be transferred to Srednaya uh, because he was hearing that okay if he will trans will be transferred into Srednaya he will be condemned and and uh, maybe he, he death and um, uh, the last time I think it was in 2014 when when I, I received the last message from him. Uh, So, this person from uh, Nabil's family was also conveying me, uh, conveying the news uh, to me, and he would also convey letters uh, from Nabil uh, and give them to me. Uh, uh, he would say in those letters that he was in a bad situation, he was being tortured, and he was very tired because they were using uh, very like horrific ways to torture him. Even reading these letters uh, was very hard for me. He was being humiliated and tortured, uh, and this is very sad because he was only conveying the truth to the people. Yes, absolutely. About the letter, the last letter that I received from him, uh, it, it was very emotional because um, he mentioned something very special about my relation with him. He said, okay, that all this discussion together that we had in the morning, what was very important to support him during these this, this years in, in prison. So for me, it was something OK. Thank you very much. I don't have any more questions. I don't know if the panel has any questions. Yes, Marina. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for your testimony, which is very important and very and very sad. I would like to ask you uh, two questions. Uh, when did you learn that uh, he had passed away? And then the second question is a little more uh, general. You said that in 2011 you started to have a dream, to, to dreaming. You were, say, uh, were seeing what was happening in Tunisia, in Egypt. Um, when did you realize that that dream of yours of a change, a non-violent change, as you said, uh, had been transformed into an actual war? I mean, that that dream was over and that the situation had changed considerably. When did you realize that and, and how, how it happened? Thank, thank you. Yes. It's just the first question because I didn't. When did you learn that uh, Nabil has, uh, uh, was dead? Because you said that you received the last message in 2014 from him, and when did you learn it? What? Yes, I, 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 for me, I remember that it was later when someone, uh, um, uh, uh, Get get out get out from the prison, and he said that he was with Nabil, and he was sure that he he was died in 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 Sydney. I think it was in two thousand sixteen or something like that. Like that. Uh, I, I I didn't remember. Maybe maybe Hanan can. This uh, same family member uh, was following up with us, and then when he would ask for a visit, uh, they told him uh, there is no one, uh, he's not there anymore. So this person told us that Nabil was executed in 2015. Uh, when we realized that our team was <laughs> very difficult, and we, we um, it, it's, di it's difficult to say in, in this moment, but it was very clear that the, uh, uh, the crucial uh, and, and the, the cruelty of the, of the regime and 
against the people. Um, it was very difficult to convince people to stay peaceful and to uh, do, and, and don't use weapon. And I think after 2000, uh, for, for me, af af after the chemical attacks in 2013, it was very, very hard to convince anybody in Syria that, okay, you can stay peaceful and you can struggle with the nonviolence technique and, and mechanism to, to allow our dream. I think this was uh, in, during this period. I want to add that uh, as a women's group uh, or a women's movement in Daraya, when the group started uh, holding uh, weapons, uh, we weren't able to go to the streets anymore because the uh, groups that started using weapons were telling us that there, we have no role there anymore. This happened uh, after peaceful guys or peaceful protesters were being arrested and detained. This was a regime strategy. They wanted to um, strip us of this dream. Uh, so most of the peaceful protesters were detained. Uh, therefore, the square was open to the guys who held weapons. Yeah, good morning. Um, I have a more general question just for my own understanding. So this neighborhood of Daraya, uh, how is it related socio-economically to the rest of Damascus? And was there a feeling of alienation from the regime uh, for other reasons apart from what you have described, um, you know, as part of that group? You know, for instance, was it an area where you were deprived of basic facilities? Um, you know, what was the nature of the community there? I'm just trying to understand. Um, I, I think that most people of Daraya are, are farmers because they, they work in agriculture and in Nijara, yeah. and if I can say, in general, it is not a very, it is not a poor area because it is very close to Damascus, so in general, the, the people live living well. Okay, of course there are uh, so, some 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 who are poor, but but I, if if I understand the question, uh, in, in in and in uh, there is a, a, a social movement in 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 the uh, in the city because there is different group ideological group. And there is a lot of debates and discussion. So there is a movement in, in, in the city. I don't know if I, I, I answered you, your question exactly. But so this movement was even before 2011. You're saying it was already there, the sort of ferment, the yes. alienation from the regime. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I want to add, uh, or I can talk about uh, the women's per perspective in Daraya. Women in Daraya, in general, uh, don't have uh, freedom to move or uh, enter the political uh, sphere. So, in April 2011, I went to participate in a protest, and there was a guy on the street saying, why are women participating in protests and demonstrations? So this feeling was there. Um, as a woman, I am here. This is a fact. So if you accept it or not, I am here. I exist. So I was, as an activist uh, in the women's movement, I was uh, trying to convince women uh, of this fact. Uh, 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 we are there regardless of uh, the opinions of men. This uh, was very challenging for us as women uh, in particular. Add to this the revolution, you can add the security threats. So this was, uh, these dif I knew of these difficulties and challenges. I grew up there. I knew 
how the society was exercising pressure on women in order for them not to be able to be free. So I was trying to encourage women to participate. This is why the women's movement in Daraya was more apparent in the media. Due to this organization that was friendly to women and that was encouraging women to participate. If I could uh, also f follow up this question about, you said the ideology was different on the alienation, but uh, in what kind of direction? And was this uh, more of um, a religious uh, tendency or more of an explicit political tendency? Uh, before 2011, it was more religious tendency. It was in Daraya. There was different groups, and uh, we we had this dialogue with all groups, and we, this allow us to develop also our our idea about the future of Syria, about democracy, because we don't have in Syria a free political party. So the or the 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 only way we we had in Daraya to express ourselves it was through the mosque. So there were there was different mosque in, in Daraya who and and it's known to people that okay this mosque is for Salafists this mosque is for liberal more liberal uh, groups etc. Thank you and I also had a question about um, you mentioned uh, that uh, Nabil was uh, afraid to go to Sednaya. And we heard about this yesterday, about the, the, the reputation and the role of, of Sydney. So, uh, but now you said that he actually died in Sydney. Uh, one word was used, execution. Uh, but could do, do, do you have more information about when he was transferred, how, why, and, and the issue of was it a formal execution or was it, uh, did he die because of the effect of the long uh, imprisonment and torture. The information I got was through this family member uh, who was talking to people who were being released from uh, Sidnaya. This person went to visit another person uh, in that prison and this detainee was saying, I heard the guard saying, uh, I have a body. So he asked the security guard on the outside who was the person uh, who uh, died, who suffocated. This is what they used. What's his name? So this guy on the other side heard the guard talking. He knew that he was talking about Nabil. This guy was saying, um, Nabil is fine, and I heard uh, him talk, uh, and uh, I know the voice of Nabil. Uh, someone was asking, uh, where are uh, the belongings? Uh, um, and then uh, they said that they heard Nabil's voice. So this is the guy who told uh, Nabil's family member about Nabil's death. This is why there were a lot of doubts uh, and people were saying that he was killed and executed and didn't die of natural reasons. Regarding the dates, I should go back to the long discussion uh, so, so I can determine when I knew that or when this family member knew of his death. They are not very clear in my head. Thank you very much. This is a uh, hard, hard testimony, we understand. Thank you very much.